Which characteristics differentiate red oak and white oak from other woods? And how are red oak and white oak different from each other? I'm Frank Owens from the Wood Identification Team at Mississippi State University. In this series of videos, we'll teach you how to identify North American woods the scientific way with a small magnifying glass called a hand lens. In the past several videos, we taught you some basics of wood anatomy, as well as how to prepare your wood specimens with a utility knife and look at them under a hand lens. Today, we're going to put all that knowledge together and apply it to identifying your first two hardwoods, red oak and white oak. Red oak and white oak are two of the most popular hardwoods in North America. Heavy and hard, they are widely used for furniture, flooring, and cabinet applications. While commonly understood to be species, red oak and white oak are actually species groups. The genus Quercus contains many different species of oak. You can broadly divide those species into the red oak group and the white oak group. Before the trees are cut down, it's easy to distinguish the various species of oak from each other because we can see their leaves, bark, flowers, and fruit. But once the trees are cut down and processed into wood materials, it's no longer possible to differentiate species belonging to the red oak group from each other anatomically. The same goes for the white oak group. That's why for many wood identifications, it's possible to deliver a result only to the genus level, not the species level. But it is possible to differentiate the white oaks from the red oaks, and that's what we'll teach you today. Before we start looking at red oak and white oak anatomically, let's get acquainted with the kinds of images I'll show you for each wood identification going forward. I'll start by showing you tangential and radial faces of each wood as you would see them with your naked eye. Then I'll show you an extreme close-up of the transverse surface like you might see under a 10x hand lens. Most wood anatomy reference books orient their transverse surface images the same way. The rays are always vertical and the growth rings are always horizontal. When you view actual wood samples, it's good practice to orient your specimens the same way so you can easily compare them to the pictures. All references to vertical and horizontal in my videos will assume this same ray and growth ring orientation as in the images. We'll show you many features of red oak and white oak today, but let's start by previewing the most important ones, the ones you should commit to memory. We'll start with the features that red oak and white oak share. Both woods are ring porous and have broad rays. In fact, whenever you see the feature combination of ring porous and broad rays, you should immediately think of red oak and white oak. No other North American commercial woods have this combination. As for contrasting features that distinguish red oak from white oak, there are three important ones. Tyloses, broad ray height, and late wood pore size and frequency. Keep these lists of most important common and contrasting features in your mind as we look at these and other features in detail. Are you ready to get started? Here we go. We'll start with some shared physical characteristics. Both oaks are heavy and hard. As for heartwood color, red oak is pinkish to light reddish brown, while white oak is light to dark brown or sometimes grayish brown. Next, let's look at some anatomy. We'll start on the tangential surface. Both oaks have what we call uneven grain. That means you can clearly see a visual contrast between the early wood and the late wood on the tangential surface. Both oaks have broad rays. These rays are so big, you can see them with your naked eye on the tangential face. They look like someone drew short pencil marks on the wood. You can actually use the, the height of these broad rays to differentiate red oak from white oak. In red oak, the tallest rays are typically less than one inch. In white oak, the tallest rays are typically more than an inch and a quarter. Try comparing ray height between a piece of red oak and white oak and see if you can see the difference. Now let's move to the radial face. Both oaks show prominent ray fleck on the radial surface, which looks like smudges here and there in the grain. Finally, let's look at some transverse features. Both oaks are ring porous. And both oaks have very wide rays. In fact, the rays are so wide you can see them without your hand lens on the transverse surface. Remember, this combination of ring porous and broad rays is what separates red oak and white oak from other North American commercial woods. The third common feature is the radial and flame-like rows of pores running vertically through the late wood. 
When I look at both oaks under a hand lens, I always imagine the large early wood pores are charcoal and the late wood pores and surrounding white tissue are flames and smoke. See if that helps you remember and recognize the oaks. Now for some key differences. The late wood pores in the red oak are large enough to see clearly with a hand lens and few enough to count. Give it a try and see if you can count them. The late wood pores in the white oak are quite the opposite. They are too small to see clearly even with a hand lens and they are far too many to count. Can you do it? This difference in the late wood pores is the best differentiator between red oak and white oak. I always start there. Last but not least, we have tyloses. Red oak has few to no tyloses. This is why you'll seldom see red oak used for wine barrels. Tyloses keep wine from seeping through the vessels. Red oak has very few tyloses, so those barrels tend to leak. White oak, on the other hand, has lots of tyloses, so it makes sense why white oak is the wood of choice for wine barrels. And that's all, folks. Congratulations on learning how to identify your first two North American hardwoods. Now that we've finished the oaks with their ring porous structure and broad rays, we'll dive into something completely different next time that has weird wavy bands of late wood pores, the elms. If you're interested in learning how to identify wood the scientific way, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be rolling out new videos over the next several weeks. In the meantime, if you have a wood specimen you want scientifically identified or in-person or online training for yourself or your company, please send me an email at frank.owens at msstate.edu. This video has been brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension, taking care of what matters.